Hall's testimony. Joining us now in studio, former CIA Director John Brennan. He is a senior national security and intelligence analyst for NBC News. Mr. Director, good to see you. I know you haven't read through the indictment. We're still reading through it ourselves. But what's your initial reaction to the well, arrest of Roger Stone? I think the, the term Stone? that's being used is unsurprising. I mean, mm -hmm. everybody was expecting this. Roger Stone was expecting it as well. But like many people in the Trump orbit, uh, Mr. Stone has an established track record of being unethical and unprincipled. And now this is catching up with him. And now a seven-count indictment, I think it's a very serious one. Uh, but it shows that the special counsel's office is uncovering the evidence it needs. And so just like uh, Mr. Mr. Stone's indictment. I'm not going to be surprised by the other indictments that are going to be coming down the pike very soon. Roger Stone has said recently, I will never testify against Donald Trump. Do you think that calculus has changed this morning? I think it's changing and will change. Uh, you know, if he decides to go down uh, for Mr. Trump, uh, it's going to be, you know, his loss. But I think there are many people who have that position and then change it very quickly when, as it was said, the federal guidelines, sentencing guidelines, uh, tend to uh, sink into them. The excerpts of the account I just read describing the way that the special counsel's office alleges Roger Stone worked with WikiLeaks and passed that information on to the Trump campaign, and in fact that the Trump campaign sought out that information, that it was not a one-way communication. Does that ring true to what you know about the case? Uh, absolutely. In the summer of 2016, uh, we were watching what was happening in terms of what was being released by WikiLeaks and uh, how the Russian hand was behind this. And so the intermediaries uh, was something that uh, was looked at very closely by the FBI and others. So again, this indictment is not surprising in any respect. Elise. How many more indictments would you expect among <laughs> the senior Trump campaign? officials that are referenced in here. Stone told senior Trump campaign officials about materials possessed by Organization One WikiLeaks. So that's in the multiple. And then also there is a Trump supporter that Stone was interfacing with about the WikiLeaks drop. Well, I expect that probably within the next 60 days, you're going to have a fair number of indictments. A fair? A fair number, a significant number of indictments. Um, I think people are waiting for the, the report that is coming out from Rob Mueller, but what I look for most is the indictments, and it's, it's so rich in detail. To me, I think all of these indictments are going to be basically the compendium of the Robert Mueller investigation, special counsel's investigation. So I expect there to be a significant number and a significant number of uh, names that are going to be quite familiar to the average American. Danny, and also uh, Mr. Brent. And what is actually happening as we speak? Where is Roger Stone? What's happening? What is the process now? They showed up at his home. Take us through and what's happening exactly. When you're arrested in a federal crime, for a federal crime, out of the district where you're being prosecuted, the very first step is your initial appearance, and that is in the district where you're That's arrested. That's the What's happening right now? That's the initial appeal. He's going to be brought before the magistrate in the federal district where he was arrested, and he'll get his initial appearance, which deals with things like uh, bail, release, just very is, preliminary is he issues. Is he holding cell right now? Is he being interrogated? Right now he's been arrested, okay? So right. now he's, he's got eight hours before he appears. What is his day today? It's un he may be being held, but it's unlikely he's being interrogated because at this point, there, number one, there's no need. They would uh, certainly Mirandize him. They'd give him his, read him his rights he would probably almost certainly know not to give any statements at that time and they're probably not even bothering they already have the information they need for their indictment he will lawyer up and then down the road if he wants to give them statements he can do that but for today he is likely being processed he's sitting in the courthouse they usually have facilities uh underneath the building or in the building or nearby to hold him. Once they ha have his initial appearance, if he's held, then they will transport him back up to the district for a hearing very, very quickly. He'll only be in Florida for a very brief time. And he makes an initial appearance at 11 a.m. at the federal courthouse in Fort Lauderdale today. Uh, one of the things we've seen, Director Brennan, the, the Trump White House and members of the Trump campaign do when someone is identified in the Mueller probe and eventually agrees and, and participates in the investigation, cooperates is they sort of disconnect themselves from him and say, well, he didn't really have a role in the campaign. Michael Cohen, uh, he was, you know, he was the pool boy or whatever they want to call him. It's going to be very difficult for them to do this if you read this indictment with Roger Stone, given the fact that this was a reciprocal relationship, given the fact that there were requests from the Trump campaign for information from Roger Stone, as documented in this indictment. 
Well, it's very difficult for them to do, but uh, unfortunately, they don't seem to be concerned about the reality of facts, and therefore, they'll continue to push out whatever they want just to be able to make their point and try to, again, appeal to their base and, and make the claim that they never had any uh, engagement in anything that was uh, illegal. Um, but I think it just is being proved false by all these indictments uh, and all of the, uh, you know, the individuals who were associated with Trump for so long. I want to ask you, too, as we continue to talk about this story, the other NBC report this morning about Jared Kushner, senior advisor of the president, the son-in-law, of course, of President Trump, being first denied top secret security clearance, but then this man, Carl Klein, who was running security at the White House, coming in and overruling that decision. Unusual, according to our reporting in White Houses, for that to happen. Elise has worked in the White House, says so she can't remember it happening. Um, what's your reaction to that story? Well, in my 33 years of government service, I never heard of the White House making a security clearance decision, right. either to revoke or to grant. Sometimes the White House would weigh in with uh, intelligence agencies and asking them to take another look at somebody that might have been denied, and then it would be adjudicated and there'd be some back and forth, but the decision always rested with the intelligence agencies or the FBI in terms of whether or not somebody was eligible for it. I have never heard a uh, decision being made by somebody in the White House to make the final decision about whether somebody should be granted access to top secret information. And it wasn't just Jared Kushner. Our reporting says there were 30 other people who at first were denied top secret clearance, but then granted it by this. What, as, what's your, well, your spidey senses well, tell well, that's you? That's the politicization of the intelligence process. And that's something that undermines the integrity of the system. It certainly sends a very bad signal to the individuals, the investigators and others who do their best to make sure that people who have access to classified information are entitled to it based on their background. Uh, so again, it's a White House decision that should never have been made. Mm -hmm. Mr. Brennan, as you kind of watch the Mueller dominoes fall and you said, uh, more to come very, very soon. Who's the next domino? I'm going to on the spot. I'm going to Jimmy the Greek here. Who's the next domino? Uh, I, I'm, I don't know. <laughs> That's all we you, uh, speculate. Give me, give me a no, I'm not going to speculate, okay. no, because, you know, people are innocent until, you know, alleged to be involved in some type of criminal activity. Director Brennan, I notice in leafing through this indictment, we've only just gotten it, that it appears Roger Stone is only indicted for things that happened after the investigation began. But you said an investigation was underway back in 2016. Can we read from this indictment that the special counsel's office believes that what Roger Stone did in 2016 before he committed these lying to investigators or whatever, that that was all legal? <laughs> no. Again, I haven't read the indictment. And I, I know that in the summer of 2016, I had numerous conversations with Jim Comey about what was happening in terms of what the Russians were doing, what was being pushed out publicly, how they got access to the information, who might have facilitated the release of information. Uh, and so whether or not you know, Roger Stone was involved in any of that, I, again, I defer to the special counsel's office. Uh, uh, it was an ongoing, very intense investigation at that time to see what U.S. persons or officials might have been working with the Russians, either wittingly or in unwittingly, to interfere in the election. As you say, Director Brennan, we'll wait to see Mueller's report till we get the full picture of all this. But we do have a lot of pieces of it now that we've seen cooperation agreements and now indictments. What's the story, as you see it, that Mueller has begun to tell with the public information that we have? that there was an extensive effort to um, try to influence the outcome of the election that involved uh, the Russians, that involved U.S. persons, uh, and that uh, may have gone to the very top of the Trump campaign. And so I think the shoes that are yet to drop are going to be the ones that are going to be the most profound and that will uh, hit the people at the, uh, at the top of the organization. Who that is? Top of the organization, may, meaning Donald Trump? Uh, it may be, may Including not. Including family uh, members? Uh, well, I think, you know, clearly they have been talked to or they've been interviewed by the FBI. I think there's a fair amount of uh, vulnerability that they might have uh, on this. Uh, but again, I defer to the special counsel's office to make the determination about whether what they did Cross that threshold from collusion, which I think is quite evident, to criminal conspiracy. Mm. And it's whether or not it's past that threshold that is going to lead into an indictment of individuals that are close to Mr. Trump, that are part of his family, or, or others. Well, we got a seven count indictment this morning of Roger Stone. He's been arrested and he has a court appearance at a federal.